Welcome, adventurer, to the lush and verdant Elwyn Forest. As we journey through the rolling hills and sparkling rivers, I, the lawmaster of this region, will be your guide to its rich history and lore, and share with you the secrets and stories of this enchanted land. Nestled in the heart of Azeroth is Elwyn Forest, a lush and vibrant zone that has been the starting point for many a hero's journey. Originally settled by the humans of Stormwind, this idyllic forest is a peaceful haven for travelers, farmers, and traders alike. Shrouded in a thin veil of mystery, the woodlands of Elwyn hold secrets that have been hidden for centuries. Once, Elwyn was home to a group of spiders that lived in harmony with the woods. But when a dark curse fell over Duskwood, the spiders mutated and grew to monstrous proportions and fled into the newly shadowed land. And in the wake of the First War, the forest soon became a battleground as the Orcs of the Horde poured through the Dark Portal and launched their invasion of Azeroth during the First War. Stormwind City was pillaged for its resources and much of the forest was raised to fuel the Horde War Machine. Elwyn Forest saw its fair share of bloodshed as the humans fought to defend their homes and their way of life. In the aftermath of the Second War, the Kingdom of Stormwind was reclaimed by the Alliance and Elwyn became its heartland again. Despite the devastation, the people of Elwyn Forest persevered. They rebuilt their homes and communities and the forest once again flourished. Today, it is a land of rolling hills, dense forests and sparkling rivers, home to both humans and creatures of all kinds. Elwyn Forest serves as the perfect starting point for new adventurers seeking to make a name for themselves in the world of Azeroth. Its lush landscapes, friendly villages and inviting atmosphere make it the ideal place to begin your journey. So come, wander the forest paths, explore the quaint towns, and uncover the secrets of this timeless land together. Elwyn Forest is one of the most picturesque zones in Azeroth. With its lush greenery, serene waters and towering trees, it offers a warm and welcome place to players old and new alike. The forest stretches far and wide, covering a vast expanse of rolling hills and picturesque meadows. A river runs through the heart of the forest, starting at the Northshire Abbey, offering a shimmering blue ribbon of water that meanders its way through the landscape. The river is home to many fish and wildlife species and is a popular spot for fishing and relaxing. Elwyn Forest is also home to many unique and interesting landmarks. Stormwind City, with its proud gates that open onto the forest, stands guard over this mystical realm, while the sanctuary of Northshire Valley and its abbey lie hidden behind a thick wall to the east. Here, many young human priests are trained in the ways of the light. Throughout the forest, small farmsteads grow crops such as wheat, pumpkins, melons and grapes, while the lumber industry is centered around the Eastvale logging camp in the east, near the border with Redridge Mountains. Amidst the trees, the Tower of Azora stands tall, where mages conduct arcane experiments. And on the road to Westfall from Goldshire lies the imposing Westbrook Garrison, protecting Elwyn's western border. Elwyn Forest is a place of peace and tranquility, but it is also a land of danger where hostile creatures lurk around every corner. Lakes in the region have been infested with hostile murlocs, and the Defiers Brotherhood is represented in the secret hideouts and safe houses scattered throughout the woods. Furthermore, bears, wolves, spiders and boars roam the vast expanse of the forest, waiting to pounce on the unwary traveller. Two of the most dangerous places in the forest are the Jasper Lode Mine and Fargo Deep Mine, which have become infested with the ruthless and cunning kobolds. The Knolls have also set up camp in the forest's edge and the northern rim of Stone Cairn Lake, prowling and hunting for unsuspecting prey. Elwyn has been inhabited by humans for centuries, but it attracts members of all Alliance races due to its close proximity to the capital city of Stormwind. The residents of Elwyn are primarily engaged in logging, farming, fishing and mining, with a notable reputation for breeding loyal and steadfast steeds called Evendales. The hard-working people of Elwyn play a crucial role in providing food and supplies to sustain the population of Stormwind. However, this exchange of goods and resources faces various threats, kobold invasions, bitter feuds among farmers and attacks from wild animals disrupt the tranquility of the region. 
Although the Defias Brotherhood once brought terror to the land, Elwyn experienced a period of peace after their defeat. Northshire Abbey remains committed to recruiting and training brave adventurers to maintain order. Meanwhile, the Blackrock Orcs in the nearby Red Ridge Mountains gather their forces, posing a significant danger to their old human enemies in Elwyn Forest, especially with Stormwind's militia stretched thin. Elwyn organizes festivals and celebrations around the planting calendar, with the harvesting festival being the most significant. Additionally, the region is visited periodically by the renowned Dark Moon Fair, a traveling event that brings entertainment and excitement to the area. To the west lies the harsh land of Westfall, once a prosperous farming community now plagued by hardship and the nefarious Defias Brotherhood. Southward, the paths lead to the somber realm of Duskwood, where darkness reigns. The haunting melodies of the forest mingle with whispered secrets as cursed creatures roam the land. Eerie tales of the restless undead add a chilling aura to the atmosphere. To the east, nestled amidst towering peaks, lies Redridge Mountains. Lakeside communities strive to fend off threats from the Black Rock Orcs and their allies. Yet within this ruggedness lies a tale of resilience and determination. Marshal Dugan has been informed about the presence of kobolds infesting the Fargo Deep Mine. As a result, he assigns adventurers the task of exploring the mine to validate these reports. Concurrently, William Pestle at the Lion's Pride Inn requests adventurers to collect candles made from kobold wax. On their return, they also sell the gold dust they acquired from mining to a peculiar merchant named Remy Two Times. After providing a report to Marshal Dugan, the adventurer proceeds to investigate the Jasper Load Mine, situated in the northeastern foothills of Goldshire. Eventually, Marshal Dugan realizes that increased patrols near the mines are necessary before they can be reopened. While exploring the Fargo Deep Mine, adventurers come across the Stonefield Farm and become entangled in an ongoing family feud. Auntie Bernice Stonefield has lost her necklace and accuses Billy McClure, a member of the rival McClure farming family, of stealing it. The adventurer questions Billy, who claims to be too hungry to remember. They discover that Billy has a fondness for Bernice's pork belly pies and realize that offering him one might jog his memory. The adventurer hunts wild boars, gathers the meat and brings it back to Bernice. Although she is displeased, she bakes the pie in order to retrieve her necklace. They return the pie to Billy, who still doesn't confess but enjoys the pie nonetheless. It is revealed that a kobold named Goldtooth took Bernice's necklace after Billy dropped it near the mine and brought it to his den above. Finally, the necklace is returned to Auntie Stonefield, who reveals that it originally belonged to her husband. William, a resident of the Lion's Pride Inn, asks the adventurer for a favor. He shares that during his visit to the McClure vineyards, he overheard Maybell McClure crying in her cottage. Concerned, he requests someone to check on her well-being. The adventurer finds Maybell, who confesses that she is in love with Tommy Joe Stonefield. However, due to the long-standing enmity between their families, they cannot be together. Maybell entrusts the adventurer with a love letter she has written for Tommy Joe. Upon reading the letter, Tommy Joe directs them to his grandmother, Grandma Stonefield. Grandma Stonefield, opposed to the feud between the families, takes it upon herself to unite the young lovers. She communicates her plan to William Pestle, who asks the adventurer to collect crystal kelp fronds from the murlocs residing in Crystal Lake. With the fronds in hand, William creates an invisibility liquor, which the adventurer delivers to Maybell. Overwhelmed with guilt but determined to pursue her love, Maybell consumes the liquor and disappears, sneaking away from her family. The Brackwell family possesses a large and esteemed pig named Princess. However, Princess occasionally wanders off and ends up at the Stonefield farm, where she begins devouring their watermelons. In response, Mar Stonefield swiftly requests the adventurer to eliminate the pig and retrieve a brass collar from it as evidence of its demise. Remy two times urges adventurers to inform Marshal Dugan about the growing danger posed by the Murlocs to the east. 
Due to resource limitations, Remy cannot send additional troops without a military report. As a result, he tasks the adventurer with speaking to Guard Thomas, who confirms the aggressive behavior of the Murlocs. Guard Thomas assigns the adventurer the mission of locating two missing guards, Rolf Hartford and Malachi Stone, who were sent to investigate the Murloc threat, but never returned. Unfortunately, the adventurer discovers the lifeless bodies of both guards in the Murloc village. Witnessing this, Guard Thomas realizes that the Murlocs are a formidable and imminent threat that can no longer be overlooked or underestimated. Northshire Valley, a tranquil haven nestled in the heart of Elwyn Forest, holds many secrets and stories. It's the birthplace of countless human adventurers, yet travelers from all over the world come to admire its pristine beauty. But as with many idyllic places, danger lurks around every corner. During the Second War, the valley was the stronghold of the Twilight's Hammer Clan, who served under Gul'dan. Even after the war, the guards of Stormwind struggled to maintain peace in the valley due to increased threats from wolves, kobolds, and the Defiers' Brotherhood. And during the Cataclysm, the peaceful vineyards and mountains were invaded by Blackrock Orcs and Goblin Assassins. Though the valley is surrounded by mountains, a guarded pass to the south allows entry and a river runs through the valley and into Crystal Lake. Goldshire is a significant human town that serves as a central hub for many low-level human characters embarking on their adventures. Situated southwest of Northshire, Goldshire boasts various class trainers and some profession trainers, including a blacksmith. It is best known for being home to the Lion's Pride Inn, which is typically the first inn encountered by human characters. As a result, it attracts a diverse range of visitors, including travelers, merchants, adventurers, stormwind guards, and priests from the nearby Northshire Abbey. The Westbrook Garrison serves as a fortified barracks located at the western edge of Elwyn Forest, near the border with Westfall. It stands as a crucial defense against the looming threat of the Defias Brotherhood. To the south of the garrison, the forest teems with Riverpore Knolls, while beyond it lies the enigmatic and shadowy expanse of Duskwood, separated only by a river. Westbrook Garrison plays a crucial role in safeguarding Elwyn Forest's western border, ensuring that Knolls and bandits cannot establish a formidable presence within Stormwind-held territory. Led by commanding officers like Captain Sumner Trask, the garrison houses various military units and often serves as a training ground for newly initiated knights under the Stormwind Guard. Within the garrison, wanted posters catch the attention of adventurers, offering a quest to eliminate Hogger, an elite knoll wreaking havoc in the southern camps. This bustling hub is not only a military stronghold, but also a haven for soldiers, mercenaries and lively individuals eager for tales from the road. Their spirits are lifted by the clinking of mugs filled with ale and the thrill of a good brawl. Stonefield Farm is one of two farmsteads in southern Elwyn Forest, involved in a long-standing and bitter rivalry. The Stonefield family and the neighbouring McClure family hold a deep dislike for each other. However, in a tale reminiscent of Romeo and Juliet, a child from each family has fallen in love, defying the feud between their households. There is a glimmer of hope that their love story can bridge the divide and unite the two warring families. The Tower of Azora is a small mage tower situated in the central area of Elwyn Forest. The tower is overseen by various gnome servants who serve Azora under the leadership of the Archmage Theocritus. A constant feud exists between the tower's inhabitants and the residents of the Tower of Ilgalar in Redridge Mountains, which is ruled by the wicked sorcerer Morganth. Both towers engage in continuous magical surveillance of one another. Stone Cairn Lake, located in the northeastern part of Elwyn Forest, is a lake characterized by its ring shape, which is created by a large island in the center. The name of the lake is derived from Hero's Vigil, a stone cairn monument constructed on the island. This monument serves as a memorial to honor the significant loss of life during the first war against the Orcs. 
Previously, Stone Cairn Lake was a safe destination for pilgrimages. However, it has now been taken over by rogue wizards who have established their presence on the island. Additionally, there is a tribe of murlocs residing in the lake's waters, constructing primitive structures along the southern banks. The Brackwell Pumpkin Patch is located in the southeastern part of Elwyn Forest. However, the patch has been invaded and occupied by bandits, who can be found both in the buildings and within the pumpkin patch, where the Boar Princess roams along the farm's pumpkins. Originally, the farm was believed to be owned by a family known as the Brackwells, but it remains a mystery as to what happened to them. It is uncertain whether they were killed or forced to leave the area after the Defias Brotherhood took control of the land. Situated in the far east of Elwyn Forest is the Eastvale Logging Camp, which is near the Red Ridge Mountains and north of the main road. The camp consists of a series of lumber mill camps with living areas in between. Lumber orders constantly come in and the lumberjacks work under strict deadlines. However, the presence of aggressive wildlife such as wolves and bears has become a problem, causing delays and threatening the workers. The Stormwind Guard has gotten involved and recruits adventurers to collect abandoned lumber and deal with the aggressive wildlife. The Echo Ridge Mine, Fargo Deep Mine and Jasper Load Mine were once the three main mining sites in Elwyn Forest, playing a crucial role in providing valuable raw materials for the war efforts of Stormwind City. However, these mines have all fallen victim to the same unfortunate fate, being overrun by kobolds. Echo Ridge Mine, situated in northwestern Northshire Valley, has become a source of frustration for the local humans due to the presence of these creatures. Fargo Deep Mine, a gold mine, has been completely taken over by kobolds, forcing it into abandonment. As for Jasper Lode Mine, it too has suffered the same fate, with the kobolds not only occupying the mine, but also facing the threat of mine spiders lurking in its depths. The once prosperous mining operations now require the intervention of brave adventurers to reclaim them from the kobold menace and restore their productivity for the benefit of Stormwind City. Gerard's Landing is a boat landing located on the Elwyn Forest Bank of the Nazfariti River. It was seized by the Defias Brotherhood, who utilized Gerard's Landing as a base for smuggling stolen goods from Redridge Mountains to Clarvens Tower in Westfall, which suggests their involvement in illicit activities. The landing is under the management of the Dockmaster, who oversees the operations and logistics of the smuggling activities. The surrounding area near Gerard's Landing is heavily infested with defias rogues and bandits, posing a significant threat to anyone attempting to pass through. Situated in the mountainous region of northwestern Elwyn Forest is Thunder Falls. To access the ravine, there is a steep path on the right side of Mirror Lake's waterfall. At the entrance of the ravine, there is a small rural cottage, the cottage features an anvil, a cosy fire, a small pier, and a boat next to the river. Following the river from the cottage will lead to another waterfall that eventually empties near the border of Westfall. Thunder Falls is notable for its unique characteristics. It stands out as a ravine with waterfalls on both sides. The falls are supplied by a third waterfall that cannot be reached, originating from the cliffs on the northern side of the mountains. The presence of these double-sided waterfalls adds to the scenic beauty and distinctiveness of Thunder Falls. In Northshire Valley, you'll find Marshal Douglas McBride, a noble and courageous leader who serves as the commander of Northshire Abbey's garrison. He is responsible for the defense of the valley and has marshaled a group of paladins, warriors and recruits to rid the woods of the dangerous kobolds that have infested the area, particularly the Echo Ridge Mine. During the elemental invasion, the worried citizens frequently sought Marshal McBride's counsel on how to prevent the invaders from entering Stormwind City. However, his trials didn't end there. In the aftermath of the cataclysm, the Black Rock Clan orcs breached the once secluded Northshire Valley through a newly opened passage in the mountains. Marshal McBride now faces his greatest challenge yet as he leads his troops to repel the orcish invasion and protect the people of Elwyn Forest. 
Stationed in Goldshire is Marshal Dugan. As the leader of the Stormwind Army forces there, he is tasked with keeping the peace and security of this bustling town and its surrounding areas. Marshal Dugan is a shrewd and experienced commander, ever vigilant of the dangers that threaten the people of Elwyn Forest. Although he is a wise and seasoned leader, Marshal Dugan has been known to underestimate certain dangers in the past. When Remy two times warned him of the Murloc threat in the east, he was skeptical of their danger. It was only after the tragic deaths of Rolf Hartford and Malachi Stone, as reported by Guard Thomas, that he realized the gravity of the situation. Deep in the southwestern region of Elwyn Forest lives Hogger, the fierce chieftain of the River Poor Pack, with his sharp teeth bared and his eyes fixed on the horizon. For Alliance travelers, defeating Hogger is a rite of passage. Despite his relatively minor role in the game, he has become one of the most notorious and widely recognized characters, due in no small part to his impressive difficulty. However, Hogger's power extends far beyond his own null pack. He is an indirect agent of the Defias Brotherhood, working alongside his Riverpore brethren to sow chaos and discord throughout the kingdom. As Hogger's notoriety grew, so did his ambitions. He carved out his own territory on Hogger Hill, leading his pack with a ruthless ferocity that struck fear into the hearts of all who opposed him. But even the most formidable foes can fall, and Hogger was no exception. After a hard-fought battle, he was defeated and imprisoned in the stockade of Stormwind City. With their leader gone, the Knoll packs were thrown into disarray, making them easy prey for the armies of Stormwind. Despite his defeat, Hogger's legacy lives on. To this day, tales of his ferocity and cunning continue to be told, inspiring new generations of adventurers to take up arms and face the dangers that lurk in Elwyn Forest. And so, dear listeners, our journey through the lore of Elwyn Forest comes to a gentle close. We have walked its sun-dappled paths, breathed in the fragrance of its ancient trees, and embraced the tranquility that lingers in its every corner. As the Law Master of Elwyn Forest, I am humbled to have shared this journey with you. May the knowledge you have gained and the stories you have heard serve as a beacon of inspiration and curiosity in your own quests. Remember, within every forest lies a hidden lore, waiting to be uncovered by those who dare to seek it. As you depart from this realm of wonder, I bid you farewell, dear traveller. May your future endeavours be filled with adventure and triumph. And should you ever return to Elwyn Forest, know that its ancient trees and gentle streams will welcome you with open arms. Thank you.